Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and look over here, we've got a bee hatching out. So a lot of this calf brood's been hatching out, and you can see those eggs we just showed you. Queen's still laying, it's almost November, one day from it. Oh, real quick, um, look how they've got a ring of this, what is pro suite going around them. Now, for those of you who are wondering what's going on, this is our nucleus colony um, we're doing. I, I was given this equipment, so pretty excited about this. Um, I don't run my operation this way. There's nothing wrong with this equipment. It's just, you're going to have to manage it a little bit differently in the spring, but we're going to build some boxes, and we're going to move this to a more stable location eventually, and then we're going to stack them up and just have a little fun with it, pull resources of, of brood from it, make splits, treat it differently, because I know a lot of you are going to want to fool with this kind of stuff, especially if you're you know just doing a handful of hives. This is a great idea, fantastic idea, but when you're, you're doing hundreds and hundreds of hives, it, uh, it, it it's just uh, it's more complicated when you have different equipment. Not always. I know Michael Palmer used this kind of stuff, but for me, that's not the way I want to do it. That's the nice thing about beekeeping is there's so many options. And as long as you really take care of the fundamentals of beekeeping, it doesn't matter. You can stick them in a long hive if you want. There's brood over here, lots of nice looking larvae, but we've been feeding them. I'll show you how we have been feeding them. Let's go ahead and drop down. It's, it's raining on us a decent bit. No, not a whole lot, but so we combined the two mating nukes together. Both of these were raising queens for us for multiple months, and we usually keep them around three frames of bees, so we added them together. And this is getting some pretty good weight in it now. There's not a whole lot of brood. We're going to go, you know what, I'm, I almost forgot, but we are going to go ahead and uh, I'm not used to having such small thin boxes like that. I'm going to have to learn how to set it down right without flipping it over. There's not a whole lot of bees down in here. Looks like about maybe two frames of bees down in the bottom at the most. You can see our entrance over here with the the reducer. There's a lot of bees coming in and out earlier before all this rain started back up again. It's been really rainy, so we had a big drought, and now it's just rain, rain, rain. So we don't get a lot of snow and ice. We get a lot of mud in our winters, and then occasionally we get some ice. It's really pretty late to be feeding patties. They don't need, necessarily need to have it. Look at that yellow jacket. They're fixing to die. They're looking for anything they can get a hold of. All right. Smoke these bees up a little bit. Now, several people have asked me when we combine the two mating nukes, what do we do about the queens? Now, I found the queen that I wanted to keep and remove the other. But for those of you who don't want to take the time or have a hard time finding the queen, there's nothing wrong with combining them with the paper method that we had. I'll leave that below so if you want to see how we combine it very easy but uh if if you have two queens and you don't want to take the time to find them you can let the queens basically duke it out and or, or let the bees decide a lot but i honestly think that sometimes you're going to get it where both queens are allowed to live and that happens from time to time and then eventually over the course of time they'll select one they're putting a decent bit of food up here. We're not going to be able to get an, enough syrup, I don't think, in here. They didn't hardly have any syrup when we stuck them in here. But they have taken down about a gallon now, and we're keeping it on them. And then we're eventually going to do some sugar feeding, some dry sugar feeding. And that should help out quite a bit. So not a ton of bees in here. But I think once all the bees are consolidated together, we probably have at least a good five frame cluster minimum and as you saw there's there's brood hatching out so all of those young bees are going to really help out a lot really adds up because all of those bees are going to come out of winter and help that queen get started up so they're looking pretty good there's more honey on the outside let's just close this back together because the rain's picking up a little bit more i'm sure the bees are absolutely loving all this moisture they'll be all right I'm still in a t-shirt, and there's a yellow jacket in there, but the bees will have to run it out. I don't have time for that. Just carefully lower that down in. All right, now this is how we're feeding them currently. Now this is a medium box up here, which I find really interesting because five frame nuke boxes to meet are kind of small, but then a five frame medium box is even tinier. Let me just go ahead and throw it on. Now we got our inner cover, which really, and since we have the box like this, it needs to be 
painted or something. I have no problem with having painted lids or painted inner covers on the bees themselves. There's a lot of people that will tell you that, you know, don't ever paint the inside of your hives. That is n nonsense, absolute nonsense. There's been beekeepers doing that for well over 100 years, 150 years that I know of. And it does not hurt the bees at all. Um, I've seen bees literally go into engine blocks on dozers. They go into gasoline tanks that have been abandoned. They can handle a lot of stuff. The problem is, is we tend to freak out, especially when we don't know what we're talking about. We tend to make assumptions. Oh, the, the cell phone towers. Oh no, the airplanes shooting all that junk out of them is going to kill our bees. Oh no, my neighbor sprayed a little Roundup along their fence row. It's going to kill my bees. 99 times out of 100, that stuff does not affect the bees whatsoever. But what does is not having enough nutrition and having a lot of mites. The mites change the beekeeping game completely. And here we go on my soapbox again. But anyways, we got this feeder just right here. It's just a pint with some Pro Suite in it. So they don't have to worry about dehydrating any of that down. And all that kind of stuff. So anyways, I think this colony is going to do pretty good. We're going to do some emergency feeding before too long. And we'll show you how we do that to make sure they have enough food to survive the winter. Because I'm not sure we'll get enough syrup before it gets too cold for them to come up there and suck it out. We'll see. Always thanks for watching our videos.